Awesome. Now we can get started. And uh, we're talking about decentralized health or universal health. You heard our government talking about universal health access. Government guys just talk about words. They don't know exactly what it means. Universal health means that it health for everyone and health for everything, where everybody can, has access to health and um, every and and health for everything, not just common cold. We should even have health for Corona, COVID. Uh, you know, to we can start introducing Ubrica itself. It stands for Universe U Ustawi Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers of Africa. That is an acronym. Ustawi Biomedical Research Innovation and Industrial Centers of Africa. And of course, the epicenter of this project is in Kenya. So Kenya is the investment opportunity we are presenting to you. And um, to to consummate the project, we we have made Ubricoin as a cryptocurrency for universal health. And we've created 20 billion UBN or ERC 20 units for raising funds for building wealth, wellness, and well-being in the world, not just in Kenya, because cryptocurrencies are global. And for you to get in at the very beginning of it, you get a tidy return on your investment, um, health for you and your loved one. UBN, buying UBN today will help you reduce the burden of disease in the world. And you get to know why. So we have made uh, Ubrica with a purpose to solve three fundamental problems in health. One is lack of access, two is low quality, and three is high cost of care. And uh, I think ZP has just come in. Lack of access comes because of two problems. One, lack of money. Lack of money comes because of lack of market. Lack of market uh, for centralized market in Kenya are awash with middlemen and cartels. And so people are not able to bring things to market. To solve this problem, we create a decentralized online marketplace for bringing the village level commerce to the cyberspace. We call that sokojanja.com. And um, people also lack access when there is no facilities to go, to go to. The nearest facility is kilometers away, and it takes more than a whole day, sometimes two days, to get medical care. And so we propose to, to, to connect 100 clinical centers, retail clinical centers called URCC, each with a produce value addition center, a retail store, and a health facility. And co location of services uh, with uh, local manufacturing and market and, um, and, health, and health center removes the need to, to, to have two days, one day for market and one day for health. So we use Ubricoin to provide high internet connectivity for telehealth, telemedicine, artificial intelligence, and, um, and for com community health decision support. And then the, 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 the second biggest problem we have is low quality of care. You know that Kenyan health is of very, very low quality, okay? And quality comes from knowing how to do the right things right. Poor quality of health comes when there is lack of high quality knowledge transfer from the education establishment to practice. The solution is to create a university science and technology parks that can bring knowledge or high entropy knowledge to from, from the from the knowledge from the university to the village. And so that is another job uh, that Ubricoin is going to do. Then the final problem, which is the third problem, is high cost. Okay, care in Kenya is very expensive, and I think in the entire Africa, and of course in the United States. But the cost of care in this country is due to lack of manufacturing. Everything we use in health and medicine is imported from centralized manufacturers, and local knowledge is ignored or unfunded in manufacturing. The solution is to use um, to fund local knowledge using uh, and so that we can have manufacturing. We connect. Uh, we promote decentralized manufacturing in the produce value addition centers in the clinics in the URCCs, and then connect URCCs to one another and to one large biomedical industrial city uh, for decentralized manufacturing. And of course, then we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to 
collect data to find out information. And so that is the biomedical industrial city. So right now I want to show you the, the biomedical industrial city as we designed it in 20, 2015 and 2016. And so that uh, you, can, you can follow through from the beginning how we all started. And this thing is crawling so slowly. <laughs> Maybe we can put it up and um, reverse it all the, from the, all the from the beginning. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy duty slide presentation. So uh, you want to be patient and we're gonna go through it very slowly so that you understand. The project itself is the Ubrica One, the biomedical industrial city. We said that we're gonna have an array of clinics throughout the country known as um, Known as uh, Ubrica One, but uh, known as what? Uh, Ubrica Regional Clinical Centers around the country, and then joined to this one set. We call it Ubrica One because it connects all the clinics in Kenya. The first uh, set, the first clinic of the URCC we are developing is in uh, Kakamega, and in this in this photo, you see we have uh, on this this slide we have four four photos. We have animals. We have uh, the environment that's mountain. We have humans, and then we we have we have the people. Okay, so <laughs> let's see again. We have animals, it's elephants, it's wildlife. We have the uh, environment. We have we have people, and then we have the economy. This is a built environment right here. This is a presentation that we created through architecture program at Texas A&M University all the way back in 2016. And this is the final, final product for design of biomedical industrial city. And um, in this presentation, we will see the project scope, the site analysis, project design program, and then the master plan. So this is a presentation of the master plan for your Brick One project. And uh, these are the people who are involved in it is. Uh, the, it's located in Nakuru, Kenya. And I'm thinking that, uh, and we have to look at that site very, very, very clearly again because there are some seismic things happening <laughs> in a rock. And so these are the people who have to build, collaborators help to, to do the, the master plan, including Foster Dubisi, Chang Cheng Huen, <laughs> Professor George Mann, Jipong Lu, Tami Kreshek, Rabi Mota. Rabi Mota is, a, is an Indian. Bita Kash, Frederick Nafuko, and one final person who's been sent, passed out. Hey, passed out by, and then you have the, the guys who are doing this, Sinan Zong, Shangmin Li, and Dan Zhao. The master plan of Ubrika One is to propose self-sustaining biomedical industrial city in Kenya, located in four, 1,330 acres property in Akuru. And this one will have eventually biomedical uh, me medical campus, research district, a residential community, industrial park, and recreational district. Of course, this, uh, this site is planned and designed to meet full range of health needs, including curative and preventive, preventative care. This means that uh, it, it becomes the epicenter for medicine here in Africa where we can have uh, people taking care of local people connected through the URCCs in the country. And of course, using the internet, so they have internet connection. And then we have international tourists, who are called medical tourists, wellness tourists, and, and uh, health tours, okay? And then Kenya becomes a very central position in <coughs> this central country in manufacturing of medicine and biomedical devices and healthcare itself. Now, this, this slide shows the background information where it came from. We have the sources of background information from uh, Danjo and um, information on, on, online research. And then content itself came, and we're looking at the location and its con context, the history, culture, economics, uh, the vernacular architecture and settlement patterns, socioeconomics, and of course, 
we have produced very, very many pages of this work. There's 50 plus pages overview of Kenya and Ibrika one. And it can be available for you to, to review. And then <clears throat> this one talks about case studies. We we studied more than for 34 cases uh, showing up different scope, different development types of different strategies and approaches for building a biomed city. And then we, the topics that we, we looked at really deeply include tourism, energy, mm -hmm. transit oriented development, food system concerns, a conserv conservation landscape. And of course, we, we had many more topics, about 25 topics, and that comes in a, in a large uh, term as well. Now, this is site. <coughs> Ibrika <coughs> One is located in uh, Nakuru County, Kenya. Adjunct at the junction of the county, the I think three county considered three county junction. That's Kajiado County, Naro County, and uh, and it's in the southwest southwest part of Nakuru County, in the in the Naivaja sub, sub county. If you look at this map, you see Mount Suso there, and right across from it is uh, Lake Naivasha, and then Mount Longonot before. There's a straight line between Mount Longonot here, Longonot Park, and uh, and, uh, and and Suso, so the site is on the on the, on the northern boundary of Suso, you could say, and and just uh, just just what just to the west of, <coughs> of the five B. <coughs> my my throat needs water. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going. <clears throat> you need to meet your microphone. I think there's someone speaking in the background. <clears throat> so that that's um, where it's located. Let me see who is unmuted here. I don't know. Okay. So this is this is um, this is uh, the location of the site. I'm telling you, you recently. To 2020, 2017, this site had a seismic shift, but it's a, it's a perfect site if we can fix the geography and the geoseismic information. Now, if you you can see, it's this is Nairobi city, and to get to the site, you it, it's just straight in the northwest part of Nairobi, but you don't get there as a crow flies. You would have to go through A114. Um, A104, A104 is the highway to Nakuru. And then you, you branch off in Muru to get on highway B5, which goes all the way to Maimahio. And then at Maimahio, you would flex left as if you're going to Narok uh, or Masai Mara Game Reserve. And then uh, you just need to drive 20 kilometers just, just at the foot, foot hills of Mount Susu where you'll find the site. And um, in 2017, there was heavy rain and there was a huge crack on the ground here, uh, which is not sure whether it's a geo, geological, um, geological event that has, has divided the, the, the earth into one piece that is going to go towards East Africa, Somalia, and the, and the, and the, and the Western side. <laughs> but you know, this, this, this kind of thing to happen is about 500 years. But uh, just showing you the master plan to see the work that, that has gone into this. And in case we have to shift the site, this work is still extremely valuable, okay? And so the site in the southern boundary, it's um, about 13 kilometers, 13.2 kilometers. And then the northern boundary is, is 20 kilometers. So it's very, very long and it has a road Route contact on B5 about three kilometers in the north, so it has very good entry point. And um, you can see right now the 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 infrastructure that is available there. It's a highway, the B5. This B5 is kind of traveling from Nairobi, and to your right side here is my Mahu. And as, as you go to the left, heading towards Narok uh, or or Masai Mara Game Reserve. So it's very nicely situated. It's um, generally flat with a slope of about 0%, 0 slope, slope and very scanty vegetation, which is just savanna. 
savanna vegetation. This is showing yeah, slope analysis and it's, it's relative, relatively flat and uh, vegetation coverage is very scarce, but you can see that um, uh, in the drainage analysis, there's only water coming down from, you know, from uh, Abadeas. It floods. Right now, this place is flooding, but it floods once a year and then it's dry the rest of the year. So we have to, to think very carefully about how we catch the water. These are arroyos flowing from Mount Suzo and flowing down into towards, um, uh, towards what? Towards a big river down there. And, but um, it means that there's a lot of water available during the year, but this water is finished and disappears. So the design program is as follows. As we have discussed before, we have worked on four elements of health production. That's the human element, the animal element, the economic element, and then the environmental element. These elements combined, they create sustainable one health. And <clears throat> So this healthy living for humans, biological diversity for animals, sustainable and low impact development in the environment and yeah, supporting economic uh, and cultural development. And we call this Ubrika one as one is the first in Kenya where the first human was found in the world. We're talking about those guys, the old archeological guys who told us we had Zinjathropus around here. And of course, Eve herself was found here. And this is a starting point for Africans to have access to good quality of care. And we also call it one because it's going to be a leading tourism destination for health and ecological and agricultural tourism and sports tourism and all that. So it's leading center of excellence in health and biomedicine and technology. And then we say one is a community, one health community together and complete one, one stop health, um, healthcare facility and service with complete medical and industrial chain from research, education, innovation, patient care, and uh, many different things like that. This is, this is the reason we call it Ubrika 1. <laughs> and you can see now these four elements, the project goals is to develop a place that is friendly to humans, very useful for animals, very useful for the environment and the economy. And of course, very, very well balanced um, system. And of course, now this, this place has got about four sets of three sets of users, which for visitors, animals, and residents. So we're designing for, for visitors, for cultural and nature lovers, they can see, come there and enjoy themselves for health tourism, for business people, and for animals, it's livestock and wildlife. And uh, for local, for employees, residents, we have lo local people. That's there. There's a lot of master in that area who have to be incorporated in the master plan employees and students okay all right and then the, the design guidelines is to, to balance nature and society nature to enrich and fulfill society and society to conserve nature so in a cyclic version like that mm -hmm. and so in here we have designed guidelines i think there's a lot of architectural details that maybe you don't, you don't, they're, they're not too necessary, but it's so just important to see what is around, around the site. The, if the site is here, this is Mount Suswa, and that's Longonot. You can see it's a straight line between Mount Suswa and Longonot there. We have Lake Naivasha just um, in the top, top northwest corner there. And then we have Hell's Gate, and then we have, um, uh, yeah, it's a place that's very, very, very well su surrounded with nature. And then um, uh, we, if, if you look at the site and cut across it, there's going to be a lot of animals passing through there. So we have to create an animal underpass uh, by B5 in the north, in, in the northwest uh, front. And then southwest, we create an overpass. And you see overpass, this is a wildlife bridge. And it allows animals to travel through from the Logo North side as they're heading towards Suso. And this, and, and this south, southern boundary of the, of the site is, uh, is just uh, open for animals so that you can promote tourism. In this scheme, you will see there's a, um, as we go along, the, the forest habitat, grassland habitat, wetland streams, and uh, farmland habitat, and then urban. <laughs> 
and um, we, the, there's a lot of water available there, but if you go in January or even in December, the place is very dry. So we have to think deeply about uh, how we deal with, with water. And so one way is to catch the water that is uh, flowing uh, from, uh, from the rain, rainwater catchment area. Of course, you can see this defined path bypass uh, rain rain water and um, we make sure we conserve water and put water in, in high water tower and then water is treated and uh, then we catch rain for catchment from the mountain also it's tommy runoff from mount suswa and then there is aquifer underground very very deep but this aquifer has got very hot water or about uh, what 60 degrees centigrade sometimes more than a 100 degrees and that produces geotherm. So it means that it's a site that is very, very ready for geothermal energy uh, because the water is there boiling. As you see, in certain areas, the water is boiling at 250 degrees centigrade. And so there's a lot of geothermal potential. In fact, if you exploit geothermal potential in this area, you can provide enough electricity for Kenya. 6,000. 6,000 megawatts of energy, which Kenya, right now, we have very, very little about it. Okay, so these are, that's the basic aspects of the site. And, and, and of course, what we do, we have only 10 minutes left. I'm going to open to discussion, so you can see, you can ask questions. But basically, this is where we started. We started along there to the point that this Biomed City becomes our flagship project that's only completable after we have gone through the counties and building URCCs, that's the Brickery Clinical Centers, and joining them together into one big city. Okay, questions before we get kicked out of here. Questions? Hello? Hello? Anyone with questions? No? Yeah, question. Yes. Uh, if your if your BN has value, yes. Why wouldn't you do both the URCCs and you break one project together? Um, it it is possible. Uh, we are saying you with the 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 goal for this uh, biomed city is 20, 2024. Hmm? Uh, to put it to put down the cyber project is a lot of work, particularly in Kenya. One big job in Kenya is about uh, entitlement for lands. So they can be done together. Basically, it is just that to make sure that the, 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 the groundbreaking, everything is very, very, very well on done because Kenya, there's craziness about land. <laughs> That's why we put it on 2024. But if UBN has value, even then, we still have to develop um, we, time to develop those uh, and land, land issues, entitlements, and all that, uh, to make sure that politicians don't come killing, uh, inciting people to kill each other, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. But as far as the technical stuff to do, once uh, there's money, you can zip in there and do everything at, at once. Yes. Yeah, and they, can, they, they could start simultaneously as the URCCs are being constructed around the country, then they need to connect with the, that biomed city. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. What I've seen in Kenya in terms of uh, cities, Tatu City, I think they took about 15 years to get started, to put shovel on the ground <laughs> because of the, there was a lot of things before what you call entitlements before people could start building and then there is um council city never started <laughs> although council city is sponsored by the government but we don't want to go through it just to, to look at it before you push shovel on the ground we have to make sure that the geography is ready and the politics are ready the society is ready and stuff like that because the city is a very very long term project. That is why it is um, advisable to work with URCC at the county levels, as we are working 
at with all these other pre-implementation things of the Barmet city. Okay. Okay. Any other question? I see Grace. Grace, I don't know. If, Grace, are you in the West? Pacific West? Oh, Grace is mute. I don't see. Uh, I hear them. Okay. I, I don't know if that's some people sending me message on. On WhatsApp. No. Just WhatsApp coming in. So today we didn't uh, say anything about UBN and trading, but it's uh, as, as, as Frederick says, you trading with UBN and getting it working is very, very important and because it's going to help us achieve all this. And just to say uh, one final thing about UBN is that we have a lot of UBN in the market right now, which uh, if every one of us went there and bought a whole bunch of UBN, let's say, uh, maybe as many as that 100 million we were seeing on uh, on either scan yesterday that would do it so we need people to go and purchase as many ubns as possible so that now the value gets restored and because the people who have bought this before and they have put them back in the market now if you buy ubn don't put it back in the market because uh, it's, it's it's not helping and also but of course to to make sure that it helps well is to recruit as many people as possible, introduce as many people as possible into the UBN. And I, when I say as many people as possible, maybe no less than, than 100 people in your, in your network, tell them to buy UBN and the UBN itself, will, the price will correct itself. So what we need is to build a very, very, very big um, network of holders of UBN because it is not those network of holders that you have as many people as possible who can buy UBN. And you can see this this one is a national wide project. Hello, sir. Okay. It means that we need people in every I'm good. How are you? I'm very I have to be yesterday. I have to mute. I have to mute oh. people. We are good to sleep like that, man. Mm. Why is it not muting? Yeah, yeah. 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 muted. <clears throat> Yeah, comments. So uh, let's say that um, we're going to stop there. Um, I think uh, I see Zippy now. Yes. Zippy, she came yesterday. She talked and about. Hi. Oh, yeah, thank you. I was just. Uh, mm. <laughs> I've been here in the background and I can see a few of my friends there. So. Yeah. 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 I had sent you a little chat question, but I guess time is up. I just was like uh, trying to say you relate the Uber coin to the project so that now they can start understanding why they, uh, they need to, to buy the Uber coin. But it's okay. I guess today was good information to understand what the project is all about. Yeah, that, that, that's a bad moment today. Although yeah. if we get knocked out, we can start We can start for another few minutes to make sure that we make that connection. Clear the connection. Okay. Um, yeah. Is that okay? What time is it? It depends on the. Yeah, we have about twenty minutes before nine because I know some people are also going to work. So. Okay. So let, let me let me let me do that <clears throat> so that um, we <clears throat> we can get uh, you can log in so. So that you can answer that question.